Hi, did you know that creation and management of part representations has been significantly improved in 2023 version? Let me show you that. As you may know, since version 14, the part browser allow you to generate and manage mesh representation of your CIE model. So what's new in 2023? First of all, there is now a representation manager allowing you to better control the representation. As you could see, the usual predefined representation are there. The common rep in order to generate the mid-surface, the crash 2mm, the crash 5mm in order to generate a 2D shell mesh. The right side of this manager displays the representation parameter, the criteria file and the parameter files. This way, for instance, you can change the way the mid-surface is extracted, changing the method, or you can adapt the param file and criteria file to be used for a specific uh, mesh representation. Another great feature available in this representation manager is the user representation management. As you can see, by clicking on this plus icon, you can add new user representation and use the right side of the window to define the meshing criteria. One more thing to notice is that each mesh control is now associated to a mesh type. What is that? Basically, it's a predefined meshing template allowing you to have access to additional and advanced mesh types, such as tetra mesh, hexa mesh, rigid body mesh, or even CFD 2D mesh. By the way, the tetra mesh type now uses Simlab algorithm, which could be quite useful to generate tetra mesh on a complex geometry without having to, to do some geometry cleanup. Eventually, there are two flags we haven't talked about. This is the input representation and the mesh flag. First, the input representation is basically the required input from which the interested representation will be created. For instance, the common rep requires to have a CAD representation. And, of course, all the shell representation controls are based on the common representation, etc. This flag is, as you can see, grayed, so you cannot change it. The goal is just to have a better understanding of the meshing mechanism, what is expected by hypermesh. The second flag is the mesh flag. The goal here is to hollow the creation of multiple representations in one click, based on a predefined metadata. So let me show you that. Let's, for instance, define three new mesh representation controls. The first one will be, for instance, a mid mesh, asking to have min mesh of 4 mm element size, and let's deactivate some option for the flatten, and let's remove all the opening below 15 mm. And let's define a mesh flag called mid. For the tetra mesh representation control, let's put a mesh flag named tet, and let's ask to have a 2.5 element size. And let's reduce a little bit the maximum angle to better capture the curvature of the geometry. And let's create a last representation control in order to generate exa sin solid mesh. And let's ask to have 4 mm element size with two layers in the thickness. And for this mesh representation, let's put the mesh flag X. Okay? Once you have done that, let's review maybe that everything is correctly defined, mid for the mid mesh, tet for the tet mesh, and x for the exa mesh. Let's click OK. And now let's create this representation for this part. Let's select them and let's do a right click, representation, create. As you can see, there is a new option named automatic. Let's simply run it. When this option is selected, HyperMesh checks if any of the PDM mesh flag assigned to the selected port are matching those on the controls. And the matching controls are then used to create the representation of the given port. Let's have a look from the port browser. This big green port has the PDM mesh flag set to mid, this other one to X, and the two last body have the PDM mesh flag set to tet. That's why, let's have a look on the batch measure that is running. That's why two ports are going to be tet mesh, this port a mid mesh, and the last one with hexa mesh. The mesh is done. Let's 
load the new representation of the four parts. And as you could see, we've got 3D tetra mesh for the two bodies, hexa mesh for the gray body, and 2D min mesh for the green body. Let's have a look inside with a section cut. Thanks for your attention.